Hello, Living Hope Church family. The day we've all been waiting for is here, Christmas. Are you excited? I am. And we're so glad that you've chosen to join us here for this on-demand Christmas service. We hope that these next few minutes that you spend with us will help remind you that although the wait is over for Christmas Day 2022, the work that Jesus gave us to do is not over. So as you open gifts and feast on good food and enjoy the presence of family and friends, remember that Jesus came among us to start something fresh and compelling and inviting. And He gave us the job of sharing that good news with others. So let's pull down heaven to earth, just like Jesus came to earth so many years ago. And now, why don't you join us in singing, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Merry Christmas, everyone. What's your earliest memory of Christmas? If you're watching this with someone, why don't you hit pause and talk about this with your family or the person you're watching with? Did your memory of Christmas include waiting? Mine did. My earliest memory of Christmas is from when I was eight years old. I remember lying in bed, waiting for what seemed like an eternity. I remember lying in bed, watching the clock, wishing that the numbers would change faster. Mom had told us the night before that we weren't allowed to get up until 7 a.m. And the clock seemed to take forever to get there. When I was a kid, I used to think that Christmas night was the longest night of the year. Like there was some sort of magic or cosmic disturbance that caused time to slow down and even stop. My memories of Christmas as a child all involve waiting. Waiting for 7 a.m. so I could get up and rip into my stocking. And then waiting for mom and dad to get up, which was always between 8 and 9 a.m. Waiting for mom and dad to get up so that we could rip into our presents. And really, the waiting began back in September when the Sears Christmas wish book came out. Do you remember that? For those who are too young to remember, think Amazon, but in paper form. As soon as the wish book came out, I began making my Christmas wish list, and I'd proudly hang it on the fridge, and then I'd wait, wait for Christmas. For me, Christmas is always associated with waiting. And Christmas Day was always the finish line, the end of waiting. 
A lot of times that's how we think about Christmas, isn't it? Christmas is the finish line, the end of the year, the end of waiting for family to come home, the end of waiting to get or to give that special something. Sometimes we can't wait for Christmas to get here, and sometimes we can't wait for Christmas to be over. Either way, Christmas is often the finish line, the end of our waiting. For Mary and Joseph, that first Christmas morning was certainly a finish line. Nine months of waiting. Who knows how many hours of labor? Finally, the wait was over. Jesus was here. Jesus was born. That first Christmas was certainly a finish line for the Jews. The wait was over. The Messiah had come, but it was also a starting line. The first Christmas marked the beginning of a new season of waiting. Over the last month, we have been in a series that we've called Waiting. We've been talking about waiting for God. And this morning, as we wrap up this series, here's what I want you to know. We're waiting again. Christmas is a continual reminder that we are waiting for Jesus to come again. And in the waiting, he has something for you and for me to do. Friends, Christmas is not the finish line. Even Easter is not the finish line. Christmas and Easter are way markers, reminders on our journey that we have something to do as we wait for Jesus to return. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33. And let me explain why I say that Christmas is a continual reminder that we are waiting for Jesus and waiting for something greater. In Luke 1, 30 to 33, an angel appears to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and says, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. If you've been around church for a while, you are likely familiar with these verses. They take place nine months before Christmas when the angel announced to Mary that she is pregnant, that Holy Spirit has come upon her and Jesus is conceived within her. In the message that the angel gives, there's a promise. The promise is that the Lord God will give him, Jesus, the throne of his father, David, which is really his great, 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 great grandfather. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. Jacob was his great, 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 great grandfather. The promise is that Jesus will reign on the throne of David and over the descendants of Jesus and that his kingdom, his reign will never end. The promise is that Jesus will reign over God's people forever. Every promise that was made to Mary about Jesus has been fulfilled, except this one. We are still waiting for Jesus to reign forever over his kingdom. In Mark 1.15, Jesus says, his kingdom is near. Jesus continually refers to his kingdom as near, but not of this world, of near, but not yet, meaning we can experience the kingdom of Jesus now in this life, but not fully. The kingdom of Jesus is where everything that was broken by sin is made right, where there are no more tears, no more sickness, no more evil, where we live forever in the presence of Jesus. While Jesus began ushering in the kingdom that first Christmas, we will not fully experience the kingdom of Jesus until he returns. In the meantime, Jesus is still at work, still at work bringing about his kingdom. John 14 describes what Jesus is doing right now and what he wants us to do while we wait for him to return. Turn with me to John 14. John 14 takes place during the Last Supper, the last time Jesus gathered his disciples together before his crucifixion. Jesus has a lot to share with his disciples and chapter 14 to 13 are rich with teachings about what Jesus envisions for his disciples going forward. Jesus says to them, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Jesus has just finished telling his disciples that he's going to be with them for only a little while longer. Jesus has consistently been telling them that he's going to be arrested and put to death. I can imagine that this time, when Jesus tells them, there's probably greater urgency and emotion expressed because it's imminent. It's about to happen. The disciples probably feel that, thinking this time things are different. That's why Jesus says to them, don't let your hearts be troubled. 
because the disciples sense the immediacy and the emotion as Jesus is talking, and they're troubled. Jesus says, I'm going away, but he also says something important. Jesus says, he's coming back. When Jesus says this, he's not talking about his resurrection. He's talking about an event after that. Why do I say this? Because as we look at what Jesus says in verse two, he tells us that he's going to prepare a place for us, for his disciples in his father's house. We know from reading in other parts of the New Testament that this was not what Jesus was doing during the three days that he was in the tomb. The preparing of a place that Jesus promises is something that is happening right now. It's go been going on since his ascension into heaven. Right now, Jesus is busy preparing a place for you and for me to be with him. He is expanding the Father's home. He is building his kingdom. That's what Jesus came to do in the first place. And Christmas was not a finish line. It was the start of something new, the start of the kingdom of Jesus coming to earth. Easter was not the finish line. It was a turning point. It was not the end. Jesus' death and resurrection was the next step in what Jesus is doing. When we celebrate Christmas and Easter, we should always recognize their place in the greater story. We should recognize that we are still waiting waiting for Jesus and looking forward to his return so that we can be with him. Friends, today as we celebrate Christmas, may I suggest that we not focus on the baby in a manger, rather that we focus on the king who is working right now, building his kingdom, and who is coming again for us. That's what we should celebrate. For the last four weeks, we have been talking about how we are in the season of Advent that wraps up today. We associate Advent with Christmas, because we celebrate it as the lead up to Christmas. What we need to understand is that Advent is not a time of preparation and waiting for Christmas. Advent is intended to remind Christians that we are preparing and waiting for the return of the King. Just as Mary and Joseph prepared and waited for Jesus to come, we wait and prepare for Jesus to come again. That's the meaning of Advent. I think instead of putting up inflatable mangers or nativity scenes on our lawns, I think we should put construction signs that celebrate that the kingdom is being built on our lawn. I think we should have blow up clouds and Jesus standing in the middle because we are celebrating at Christmas that Jesus is coming again. As important as the birth of Jesus is, we should be even more excited about Jesus' second coming. Then, we will be with him. Jesus tells his disciples that he's leaving, but he's coming back for them. And in the meantime, Jesus has something for them to do. Jesus says, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Jesus' expectation is that his disciples would carry on the work that he has been doing. Actually, not just carry on, but do even greater things than he had been doing. You see, right now, Jesus is actively preparing a place for you, and as his disciple today, his expectation is that you are continuing his work, expanding his kingdom on earth. I mentioned that Advent is a season of waiting and preparation. The preparation we are to do is not just preparing our hearts and our lives to receive the King. The preparation we are to do is preparing the world to receive King Jesus. Just as the angels sang on that first Christmas and proclaimed peace on earth, good news for all, we are to proclaim peace on earth and good news to all today. Jesus is coming back. That is his promise. And when he does, we are told that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. The world will recognize Jesus as king. As followers of Jesus, we are to help the world prepare for this moment by revealing the king to the people around us right now. Christmas reminds us that Jesus came into the world and inaugurated the kingdom. And in, and in that moment, also invited us to be part of revealing his kingdom in this world. Jesus doesn't leave us to do this alone though. Jesus says to his disciples that he is sending someone to help them. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Jesus is talking about the Spirit. Jesus told his disciples, 
and all of us who are waiting and preparing for his return, that he was going to send Holy Spirit to help us. Holy Spirit is given to help us reveal the kingdom of God, to help us prepare the world for the king as we await Jesus' return. So how should you and I respond to what Jesus said? For many, Christmas is a day when we get gifts and eat a lot of food while surrounded by family. For Christians, though, Christmas should be a day when we celebrate the beginning, the middle, and the end. We should celebrate the Jesus that Jesus came into the world. We should celebrate that Jesus gave his life for the forgiveness of our sins, and we should celebrate and look forward to his second coming. While we are celebrating, we should recommit ourselves to the work Jesus has given us to do while we are waiting. We are to prepare the world for the return of the King. Today, as you celebrate Christmas, why not spend time with your family and friends thanking Jesus for his birth and the inauguration of his kingdom? Thank Jesus for what he is doing right now, preparing a place for you, and then commit yourself to preparing this world for his return. One of the ways you can commit yourself to preparing this world for his return is by engaging in our bless practices. Our blessed practices mirror what Jesus did when he walked the earth. Jesus began each day with prayer, listening to the Spirit as he guided him according to the Father's will. Jesus listened with care to the people he met. Jesus also listened to what the Father told him to do as he ministered and met with people. If you want to do what Jesus did, then you have to listen like Jesus did. Listen with an ear to the person and an ear to the Spirit. Jesus ate with people. When we eat together, we declare that that person that we are eating with matters, and we are creating space in their life for the kingdom to come. Jesus served the people around him with love. When we serve with love, we express the love of God for the people that we are encountering. And Jesus shared the story of his good news of what he came to do. And when we share the story of Jesus' good news in our life, when we share our story, the kingdom comes a little bit more in this world. Friends, Christmas is a gift. It is a gift to remember that Jesus became human, died on a cross for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins so that we could be reconciled with God. And it is a reminder that Jesus who is seated at the right hand of the Father, is coming again, and we will be with him. It's also a reminder that he's invited us to do something with him, to be a part of revealing his kingdom in this world. What will you do in response to Christmas? What will you do in response to the idea, our belief, that Jesus is coming again? And what will you do with the invitation that Jesus gives to you to, to, to reveal the kingdom on this earth? Thanks, Pastor Kirk. Friends, how are you celebrating Christmas season this year? Are you taking time to celebrate Jesus, his life, and all that he has done for us? Well, as Pastor Kirk mentioned, we encourage you and challenge you to celebrate Jesus this Christmas season with your friends and with your family practicing the blessed practices together. Take time to listen to our Lord Jesus Christ this season as he directs your paths so that you also may be more and more like our King while we wait for his triumphant return. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for who you are and what you've done in this world and in our lives. We pray this Christmas season that you would guide us in all that we do. May we honor you as we celebrate and worship you. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to be a light in this world this Christmas season, that we would be used by you to draw people close to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Living Hope, we pray that you have a fantastic Christmas season this year. May it be filled with the hope, the peace, the love, and joy of our King Jesus. Merry Christmas.